Praise Master Jesus. We are all welcome to 2022 in Jesus' name. Today is a covenant service, and the Lord our God himself, he will visit us in Jesus' name. As we begin with opening prayers, let's read from the word of God. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Isaiah 43, verse 19. The word of the Lord says, Behold, I will do a new thing. Can I hear amen? Now it shall spring forth, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. We are going to appreciate the Lord because this year the Lord has already given us a word that something new is coming for each and every one of us. Let's appreciate the Lord. Let's give him all the glory. Let's bless the Lord for another year. The journey of another year. Another year to love the Lord. Another year to serve the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for bringing us thus far. Appreciate him. Give him all the glory. Let's glorify the Lord for this covenant service. Today is a special day. A covenant service with the Lord. Let's thank him because we, we are expecting there's going to be showers. There's going to be dew from heaven. Lord, we thank you for this covenant service today. We thank you for this covenant service today. What a great advantage you have given us. Oh, Lord Jesus, what a visitation that we will give to us today. We shall be ruined. My covenant will I not break, nor utter the thing that is gone out of my leaf. Lord, we have come before you today. Come and visit us in the name of Jesus. Covenant keeping God, visit us today. Lord, move in this place. Wherever we are gathered in all our churches, the Lord will move. The Lord will move. Those online, wherever we are, Lord, we are calling upon you. We have come before our God. This day of covenant, Lord, move in the midst of your people. Shine your light upon us today. In the name of Jesus, Lord, come and release your blessing upon us today. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord cause his face to shine upon thee. Lord, visit us with a mighty visitation, Lord, today. The Lord thy God walketh in the midst of the calm. The Lord will walk in our midst today. Covenant keeping God, this day, Lord, release your grace. Lord, release your grace. As we have come before you, Lord, as you move in this place, Lord, release your grace. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let your grace shine. You will receive grace today. You will receive grace today. I have come to the throne of grace. Lord, I have come before you. I will find grace today. Everyone, wherever we are connected, there is grace for you today. Lord Jesus, grace, this grace is this abundance. Oh, mighty good, mighty great. Accepting grace, transforming grace. Lord, oh, oh, grace that carry my soul from glory to glory. Oh, he give it grace. He give it grace. Lord, in this covenant service, as I go, Lord, I want to go back with grace. Lord, grace for the ear. Oh, grace for the sea. I want to go with grace. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, grace that bring me to her. Oh, grace that bring glory. Gracious Lord, release your grace upon us today. In the name of Jesus. Release your grace. Release your grace. Grace. They go from.
from strength to strength. Every one of them is Zion. They appear before God. Lord, release your strength this day in the name of Jesus. Release your strength. Release your strength. Release your strength. Release your strength. The strength to run and not fall. The strength to climb. The strength to soar. The strength to stand. The strength to pursue and recover all without fail. It's just strength. It's just strength. It's just strength. Covenant keeping God, the God of mercy. The God of mercy. Lord, we cry mercy. Mercy today. As we come before you in this covenant mercy, Lord, in this covenant service, Lord, I'm going back with your mercy. Oh, we are going back with the mercies of the Lord. We are going back with his mercy. Lord, release your mercy today in the name of Jesus. The mercies that bring rest. The mercies that bring enrichment. Lord, mercy. It is of the Lord that shred mercy. Lord, Lord, today be merciful unto me. Be merciful unto me. As I will hear your word, as I will pray by your mercy, O oh God, let there be a performance in my life in the name of Jesus. Oh, gracious, I pray. Receive your mercy. Receive your mercy. Receive your mercy. Receive your mercy. 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 I pray, oh. That bring enlargement. Lord, it's your mercy. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said, Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Ask the Lord, Lord, prepare me this morning to receive from you. Covenant keeping God in the name of Jesus. Lord, I Lord, open my heart to receive. Lord, fill my heart with faith. Fill my heart with longing. Fill my heart with expectation. Fill my heart with desire. Lord, let my mouth be open this morning in prayer. Fill my mouth, Lord, in this covenant service, Lord. Fill it, Lord, with testimony. Fill it, Lord, with songs of joy, with songs of triumph, with songs of mercy. In the name of Jesus, Look unto me and be a seed. Look unto me and be a quicken. Look unto me and be a restored. Lord, let our gaze be upon you this morning. In this covenant summit, in the name of Jesus. Oh, gracious, I pray. Open it, Lord. Look unto thee. Look unto thee. Look unto thee. Wherever we are gathered today, look unto Jesus. Our heart, our soul, our spirit, our gaze will be upon our God. The covenant keeping God. Believe the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophet, so shall ye prosper. Let's commit the servant of the Lord before him today. The instrument of our prosperity. Lord, we are praying for your anointed today. More grace, fresh oil, fresh anointing in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring it, we bring your servant. Fill it with your grace. Lord, fill it with your power. Fill it with your anointing. Lord, fill it with action. Lord, we pray for fresh oil. Lord, fresh grace. Lord, fill your servant. Lord, feel your servant. Lord, feel your servant. Let your hand be mighty upon your servant this morning. Let your hand be mighty upon him this morning. In the name of Jesus. Great grace. Let's pray for our seminarian. Lord, let your grace, your spirit, fill them this morning. In the name of Jesus. As we break the bread of life, the hand of God will be upon our seminarian. Lord, let your grace, Lord. Our coordinator, the Lord will fill him with the spirit. Everyone ministry today, the hand of God will be upon them. Lord, we are praying. Your hand will be upon them. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, we pray for faith with your spirit. Faith with your voice. Make a melody in your heart to the Lord. Make a melody in your heart to the Lord. Our choristers will not be left out. Lord, let your hand be upon our choristers this morning. They will lead us this morning to make melody in our heart to the Lord. Let your hand be upon our choristers this morning. They will lead us Lord, to make melody in our heart to the Lord. Melody in our heart to the Lord. Melody in our heart. In the name of Jesus. 
fresh, so, so fresh, so, so flowing. <laughs> Take the word of God back to him. When we began, the Lord said, behold, I will do a new thing. Behold, I will do a new thing. Lord, do a new thing. In the name of Jesus, I've come, Lord, to this covenant service. I've come, Lord, to this covenant submit. Lord, something new. In this year of the law, Lord, do a new thing. I will even make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Lord, something new, something new in my ministry. Lord, something new in my soul. Lord, something new in my home. Lord, something new in my career. Lord, something new in my health. Lord, something new. A new name of glory, a new name of glory, a new look, Lord, something new, a new height, Lord, something new. In all our churches, as they are represented this morning in this covenant service, oh Lord, something new, oh Lord, something new. This year in our churches, Lord, It is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our sight. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our, in our sight. Lord, let this be our portion this year, Lord. Let this be our confession this year as you do something new in our lives, Lord. Bring something new. Oh, Lord, something new. Lord, something new. Lord, something new. Lord, something new. In the name of Jesus, bring before in the name of Jesus thus said the Lord to his anointed to Cyprus put your name there whose right hand I'm holding Lord this year hold my hands Lord hold my hands Lord hold my hands I have come to you in this covenant service from this covenant service Lord hold my hands in the name of Jesus this year I will not walk alone. This year I will not run alone. This year I will not fight alone. Lord, hold my hands. Hold my hands, Lord, to exploit. Hold my hands, Lord, to victory unto victory. Hold my hands to glory to glory. Hold my hands, Lord. Lift me up, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord. Hold my hands, Lord. Cause me, Lord, to do valiantly. Hold my hands, Lord. Cause me to leap over the walls. Hold my hands for a closer walk with thee. Oh, for a closer walk with thee. For more righteousness, for more holiness, for impact. Lord, hold my hands. I'm looking unto you in this covenant service. One thing I ask, oh God, as I go today, my hands will be held by you. On Judah, open doors will be open as your hands will be held by the Lord. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up. He lifted the poor from the dust and from the donkey. He set them with princess, even with the princess of his people. Cause me to operate, Lord, in the heavenly realm. Oh, Lord, in unusual favor. Lord, hold my hands and lift me up. In the mighty name of Jesus, lifted up from sin to his righteousness. Lord, lift me up. Deeper, deeper, yet I pray. Oh, I every day. Lord, hold my hands, you will take me deeper. Hold my head, Lord, you enrich me more and more. In the name of Jesus. Oh, gracious. They that shall endure to the end shall be saved. Hold my hands. I will continue the race to the end. In the name of Jesus. I will leave our brief reproach because my hands is being heard by the Lord. What would you tell the Lord that we have not asked already? Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. In the next one, one minute, we just have to pray. Ask the Lord. This year, my eyes are upon you. Lord, do this in the name of Jesus. The cruise of oil will never fail. The barrenness will come to an end. The tears will be wiped away. 
sin will be crushed and defeated. Righteousness, holiness, purity, power, progress is ours. Thank the Lord he has heard us. He has answered our prayer. Glory be to the Lord, the covenant-keeping God. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. O Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world I have I, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy path throughout the universe is played. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, we are going to sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, sings my soul, then sings so my Savior God to thee, sing to thee. How great thou art, then my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. It's a new year, it's a new blessing. Let's worship the name of the Lord. Let's glorify him. Let's magnify him. Lift up your voice unto the King of Kings and say, Lord, I am very grateful. Lord, I am very grateful. Lord, I am very grateful. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have need that thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter. Springtime and harvest, 
sun, moon, and stars in the courses above. Join with our nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Hallelujah! Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, as I see all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon. For sin and the peace that endure it, thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow, blessings all mine with and thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because you have brought us through another year. Great is your faithfulness. Our souls sing unto you because you are great. O oh Lord, that you have given us life. You have given us assurance. You have given us prosperity. O oh Lord, receive all the glory in Jesus' name. We have come today to worship. We have come today to exalt you. We have come today to lift up your name. And Lord, your name will continually be magnified in your house in Jesus' name. Lord, throughout this year, we are going to see your glory, your favor, your power, your might. And your testimony will continue in our mouths in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, anything this year that will take praise from our mouth, Lord, we reject it in Jesus' name. Testimony upon testimony. Miracle upon miracle. Assurance upon assurance. Amen. And your glory will be seen in our lives, in our homes, in the church, in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll go now for our covenant study. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you very much for the feedback. Can we bow down our eyes to pray? 
Our Father in heaven, we are grateful because of your faithfulness to us. And as we come to start the year to learn at your feet, to review your covenant with us, we pray, O oh God, that you open our ears to understand. You grant us the earth to be able to keep to these terms of the covenant this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of the living God, that which we need to know. Every one of us, make us understand today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I want to welcome us for today's covenant service. And I want to open our Bible to Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. I want to read from verse 21. Acts 27, verse 21. Acts 27, brethren, sorry. Verse 21, and I take it from here. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have backed unto me and should not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this arm and loss. And now I exhort you, be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, or but of the sheep. But they, for there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, that must be brought before Caesar. And lo, the Lord has given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. I'm looking at that word, serve, verse 23. For there stood by me this night, the angel of the Lord, whom I serve. If we look at this passage, we will see as we are trusting God to sail through 2022 without harm, we want to look at one component that will make us go through 2022 without danger, without any harm. And that was why I brought up the story of Paul, that even while people were apprehensive, they were afraid of things around and situations, he said something, there is a God whom I serve. There is a God who I have been serving. And that God told me that things will be well. And why are we bringing this up today? That God is a faithful God and God is a covenant-keeping God. He doesn't abandon his people. People who walk with God and serve God can never be stranded in life. And in 2022, you will not be stranded. And that is why we are looking at this serving God, serving God acceptably. And that's the topic before us today. Serving the Lord in an acceptable way. Paul here is an example for us, and he told us, I have a God who is faithful, who is covenant-keeping, who I have been serving, and now I'm in the midst of storms. People were afraid, but he knows I would sail through because the God whom I serve stood by me. And when Paul said he's been serving God, serving God, I want to bring this up that it, sometimes it's not easy, but it needs to be done. And when God saved us, God wants us to serve him. And let's look at Paul who said, God whom I serve. I has not been serving God. Just back down a little bit to Acts chapter 20, verse 19. You will see he said, I have served God with all humility of mind. I have served God with many tears. Why do people have tears? Is it because they are happy? I know there are tears of joy, but when in this context, that means it was serving God and things were not comfortable. 
He says, serving God even with many tears and temptation and everything that happened to me, I served God. It was not easy, but it needs to be done. Serving God. And when we are to serve God, all who need to serve God, all who need to who will be following God, need to prepare their heart to serve God and serve him acceptably. So this Paul is saying, okay, I have a manual to serve God in an acceptable way. And this morning, we'll be looking at that manual that Paul gave to us. Because we can trust him and trust his judgment. Because he served God. And what's that manual? Let's open our Bible to Romans chapter 12. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We see the manual and the template. In fact, the study today will be looking at the old book of Romans chapter 12 from verses 1 to 21, the old chapter, rather. But let's read from verses 1, Romans chapter 12. I read from verses 1 and 2 now. Paul said, this is the manual. This is what I followed. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, only and acceptable unto God. And that's why the topic is brought out from serving God in an acceptable way. Only and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind, that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Serving God in his own way and not in our own way. Because if you look, for example, in Titus chapter 1, verse 16, the Bible says there are some who profess to know God, but in their works they deny him. Sometimes people say, I'm serving God. But the question we need to ask ourselves is this. It is serving God in the way God wants that is acceptable. And this is what we are going to study and look today. That if we want to go through 2022, trusting God that God will keep to his own part of the covenant, which he always would do, we need to understand that we need to keep to our own terms of that covenant of serving God. And how do we serve God in an acceptable way? From this manual that Paul gave to us in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 21, there are three words that are coming up in this verse, in these two verses we have read for a start. You see the word sacrifice. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And we'll see the next word, separation. Verse 2, do not be conformed to the world. That means be separated from the world. And the third thing we'll see is service. These three elements are important in the terms of the covenant that God is making with us in 2022. There is a background noise somewhere. Praise the Lord. So, yeah. We are looking at these three elements of sacrifice, separation, and service. If we are going to serve God acceptably this year, sacrifice, separation from the world, and our service. Now let's look at them, one after the other. The sacrifice, we will look at a pure, a present sacrifice. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1, God is saying, I beg you, therefore, by the mercies of God, you present your body a living sacrifice. What kind of sacrifice does God, does God accept? A living sacrifice. There are some who present that sacrifice before God. That is not acceptable unto God. Remember, we are studying serving God in his own acceptable way. Um, if you look at it, our sacrifice must be present. That's active, and it must be pure for it to be acceptable before God. We need to learn that this year. If we don't want the year to just be ordinary, we need to understand that God demands a present and pure sacrifice. I have this for us. I mean, 
when we see this in Dutch, be caution, something important. We cannot give to God just part of us. God will take your all or he leaves you for all you are. He takes all or nothing at all. And God is asking us, every one of us, old or young in the church this year, God demands our heart. If we have been working with God in the previous years and not been perfect, remember, it's just the same call. God is calling you that you must present yourselves as a pure, number one, sacrifice, as a present sacrifice, not just in the past. You must live in the present before God. The devotion, our devotions, our, sac our, our consecrations, our service to God must be in the present. And how can we do that? I have this seven things. If you look at all the under words that are underlined in those seven things, they are active words. They are not passive. We cannot serve God passively. We only serve God actively. What are the things, elements on how to present ourselves as a pure sacrifice unto God in 2022 to maintain that part and serve God acceptably? Number one, you must give your heart unto God. Proverbs 23 says, my child, give me your heart. God needs your heart. God needs our heart. Give your heart unto God in 2022, not half as sadly. Remember, God takes all or it takes nothing at all. Number two, love the Lord your God with all your faculties. In Mark 12, Jesus told that man, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. We are to love the Lord with all of our faculties. That is the first commandment. And that is what God is asking from us today. And that will mean, number three, give the Lord the first place in your heart. There are some who have sacrifices we give unto God that is not making God the first in our life. It's okay, God, I will do this, but after I have satisfied myself, those sacrifices are not acceptable before God, or it doesn't yield the result that we are expect that we'll be looking for. That's why Paul said, when I was serving God, there were times I served him with many tears because there were times what God demanded would take tears, but you still have to give unto God. Give up every idol that is in your life and follow the Lord. It's part of how we can present a pure sacrifice before the Almighty God and give a present sacrifice before God and put all our emphasis and affection on heavenly treasures. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. We are Christ, is seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above and not on things on earth. If we are to get, make our service acceptable, acceptable unto God, our affection must be on things above and not on things on earth. The Bible says because you are dead and your life is hid in Christ, in God. Serve God with a single earth and walk humbly with your God. In Micah chapter 6, verse 6 to 8, how do we serve God and present our bodies a living sacrifice unto God. Micah chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. Walk humbly with your God. We are we shall I come before thee, Lord, and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offering and with the calf of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with a thousand of rams or ten thousand of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? or for the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul. Verse 8, and this is important. If you want to serve God acceptably in 2022, he had shown you, O oh man, what is good and what the Lord has required of thee to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Walk humbly with our God means we don't have our own opinion above God's opinion. If this is what the word of God says, that is what we obey. And that is how to serve God in an acceptable way to present our bodies as a present and pure sacrifice. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, Apostle Paul moved, continued in that manual he presented unto us. 
on how to maintain that covenant with God. In verse 2, it said, be not conformed to this world. We are living in the world, but it says, be not conformed to the world. And that takes me to the second point, a peculiar and personal separation. Be not conformed to this world. And let this tell us again, if we are to be honorable in the sight of God, you must purge yourself from the common use. Purge yourself from things that are common in the world and be a holy vessel unto God. As Christians, we must remember, and the Spirit of the Lord is reminding us in Galatians chapter 1 verse 4, that Christ gave himself for our sins. And the reason why Christ gave himself for our sins was that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. The Bible called the world we live a present evil world. And the Bible, God doesn't want us to be in league with friends, romancing with the evil world, the things God's called evil, that we are walking with it. Jesus died to deliver us from this present evil world. And henceforth, we are not to be conformed to the world. And if we are not to be conformed to the world, that's why Paul said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that mean? Be ye transformed means be distinct, be separate from sinners. The world means the mentality and the practices in the world. A Christian's de decision is not guided by the practice, the common practice and the popular practices around. It might be popular, but it doesn't mean it is right. And the Bible says, be distinct, be separate from the world. In 2 Timothy, we'll read that part. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, you are a Christian, Bible says, and you are a soldier in the army of God. No man that is warring entangles himself with the affairs of this world, that he might please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. If we want to please God and walk according to the terms of the covenant that God is giving unto us and serve God acceptably in 2022, we must be distinct, separate from the mentality and the practices of sinners around you. Don't be influenced by sinners around you. Don't mingle with the world, mentality of the world, either in worship, in marriage, in business partnership, in lifestyle. That is what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, that we, we should not, do not have any fellowship with, war, with the world. Avoid evil doers. Shun them. Don't take the French cheap with the world, take advices, evil advices from partners in the world, uh, partners who are sinners, from sinners. Bible says, be not deceived, evil communication, evil partnership will corrupt good manner. And when we talk about, talk about the world, even in the church, there are people who are still in the church who are not yet born again. Well, if you're in that category this morning, I'm praying, I'm trusting God, that you would rededicate your life to God this morning. Jesus is inviting you. But if you are born again, the Bible says one of the instructions and the way to separate is we should flee from sinning church people. First Corinthians chapter 5. There are people who stay in the church and are still, part, and are still sinning. Don't sin because somebody who asks you to sin is in the church. Flee from sinning church people. In First Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11, Paul said, to the church in Corinth, but now I have written unto you to not to keep a company. If any man that is called a fornic a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner, what did Paul say? I want to hear us, please. With such a one, know not to eat. Flee from sinning people in the church. There are people in the church also who stay in the church. Avoid those who contradict the sound doctrines in the church. 
the sound doctrines of the Bible, avoid those who contradict it. Shun those who discourage others from taking serious stand with God. In 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 13 and 14, Micaiah was the only prophet. He was standing, and other prophets told him, we have told the, pre, the, the king, this is the way God, this is the lie we have told the king. Micaiah, irrespective of what God is telling you, tell the lie to the king and tell King Ahab to go in his sin. And Micaiah said, no, I will only say what God has asked me to say. We should shun those who discourage others from taking serious stand for God. Number seven, if we want to be separate from the world, if we want to not be conformed to the world, then that means we must be close to God in prayer. Seek the Lord in secret prayer and in personal Bible study. Develop your inner man this year. Mark 135 talks about Jesus. And if you look at Jesus, if Jesus as God spent most a lot of his time praying, Mark 135 says, even he had a practice of rising up before the day, going into a solitary place where he will not be distracted to pray. If Jesus prayed, who are you and I that we will not pray? In Matthew chapter 4, verse 3 to 4, Jesus said, man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And that was why he was able to overcome the temptation of the devil. If we don't have the word of God stored in our heart, take time to secretly take time to personally study and develop our inner man. When the devil comes, we're going to fall flat. I pray we'll not fall flat to the devil. And the Bible says, also seek to excel in things of God. Colossians 3 verses 1 to 3, we read the other time, says, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. And in Proverbs chapter 18 verse 1, if a man has decided in his heart that I want to serve God, if a man has decided I want to serve God acceptably this year, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1, what is the Bible telling you and I? Through desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermediate with all wisdom, meaning are you going to devote yourself solely to these personal separation. Jesus said, the Bible says, be not conformed to the world. And finally, we look at acceptable service. What are the profitable and acceptable service that God is expecting of us? What, what are the practical ways that we can render service? If you look at the manual that Paul has given unto us in Romans chapter 12, verse 3 to 21, we'll see it that God is happy in our services when would render it acceptably. God delights in our services when we render it acceptably. In Romans chapter 3, from verses, Romans chapter 12, rather, from verses 3 to 21, we will see all kinds of uh, ways we can practically serve. And this is listed below. When we serve, don't be too arrogant. Do not be high-minded, rather be sober. In verse 4 and 5, recognize that there are different talents and different gifts in the body of Christ. We, may, we, are, we are many members in one body. We don't have similar function. Recognize that in practical service. And when you recognize that, that means you do not withhold your gift from the Lord. Surrender your gift for the use of the whole body. Nobody in the house of God is useless. God has something special for you. If you, were, if you spent 2021 and did nothing, 2022, do something for God. Focus on faithful and consistent service. Show love without dissimulation, without pretense, and avoid every form of evil. This is the demand of God. Don't be, don't be lazy, be diligent. In verse 11 says, not slothful in business, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. And it tells us, do rejoice in all patience and tribulation. Combine the fruit of the spirit with a prayerful lifestyle. A Christian doesn't have to wear a strong face every time. Be generous in practical giving. Don't be tight-fisted. Let others be blessed by you. Do not repay evil for evil. Do not retaliate. Live in peace with one another. Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. We can see the manual that Paul has given unto us. And he has told us, 
the God he served was able to, to, to stand by him. If we also serve God acceptably, the law will stand by us. I want us to go to God in prayer and commit ourselves to God and pray. One prayer, God help me to serve you acceptably this year. One thing we have that is coming out from what we have studied is God is a faithful God and a covenant keeping God. If we keep to our terms of the covenant, he will keep to his own term. Pray and tell God, Lord, help me to serve you acceptably this year. I don't want to serve on my own terms. I want to serve in your own terms or on your own terms, oh God. I don't want to be among those people that the Bible said in, Pro, in Titus chapter 1 verse 16, they profess to know God, but in their work, in what they do, they are reprobate. They are disobedient unto God. God, help me to walk closely with you this year. Help me to keep to the terms of the covenant. We, it has been highlighted. We will still have the slides with us. Help me to, be, to keep to the terms of the covenant that I see. Help me to keep away from the things that defile. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world. And that is what we have examined in point two. Things that defile, things that God hates, the things that the allows and the enticement of the world. Help me to keep away from them. We will do well for ourselves if we spend time, if we pray earnestly that God would help us. When the Bible says, do not be conformed to the worldly practice, pray and tell God, Lord, help me to surrender all what God says I should drop. Because it is popular doesn't mean it is right. Be not conformed to this world. Help me to actively do what you want. Present your body as a living sacrifice unto God. That I will be follower of them that do good. I will do those practical things that the Bible has told us. I will, in from chapter from verse three to twenty-one, I will follow them. Just a closer walk with you, O oh God. That Lord help me to walk closely with you in this year, twenty twenty-two. I want my walk with you to be different, O oh God. I don't want just to continue the same way. Let's pray and tell the Lord. I don't want to continue the same way. I don't want to walk the same way. Walk in, walk the, in the old way. You know, God is always faithful. Paul said, the Lord whom I serve. Lord, help me to be able to serve you acceptably this year. That's a prayer that should be in the mouth of every child of God that wants to serve God. God is calling you. It is time to serve God acceptably. And that will mean presenting your bodies. Presenting your bodies as a present living sacrifice. In Romans chapter 6, Paul said in part of the manual, I don't want to yield my members of my body as instruments of unrighteousness. I don't want to be the agent of division in the church. That is, people stop coming to church. People stop serving God because of what I say. I don't want to be that sinning brethren, that sinning brother, that sinning sister, the, the, the member of deeper life that is still a drunkard, the member of deeper is still a fornicator, the member of the parliament that is still a railer. I don't want to be that sinning Christian this year, that sinning church member. You can't be a sinning Christian anyway. Let's tell the Lord, nobody will sin against God because of my actions or my word. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we ask you that you help us. You want us to present ourselves and we yield ourselves before you. We pray, accept us and help us that we will live as a living sacrifice. Present ourselves and stay clear of what you don't want us to entangle ourselves with. Help us not to live by the dictates of this world, present evil world. We will not be conformed to this evil world. But um, from, as you renew our mind through your word, help us, Lord, this year that we'll be able to serve you acceptably in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to run away from things we have to run away from. And help us to seek you closely in prayer and in personal study of the scriptures. Thank you, Father, because we know you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' name. We are afraid. We, while we will at this time go into our intercession, we want to remember our leaders.
before the Lord. God has been faithful. He has fed us with the word of life. At this time, I want you to just offer a prayer for the leadership of the church and say, Lord, we thank you for their lives, beginning with our general superintendent. Let's thank God, global crusades, ministering power and life. We have entered into another year. The Lord being gracious unto us. So let's thank God on behalf of our pastors, on behalf of our national leaders, on behalf of our regional leaders. Let's thank God for everyone that God has used to bless us. Father, we want to thank you for the all you have done, even what we have just heard this morning. Let's thank God. The word of life we receive at as we come. Let's thank him for this. And this time we want to pray for our GS. This year, the Lord will strengthen him more and more. As we plug into the global crusade, so will be the power from him reaching all over the world. Lives will be transformed. Grace will be multiplied. Let's also pray for our overseer, Pastor Ojo, and his family. The power of God will rest upon him. This is another year God expects us to make progress. This is another year God expects us to advance. Let us pray that the Lord will cause his grace to shine upon him and upon his family so that the work of God will prosper in this part of our world, in this region where we are. Great things will happen and we will benefit together. And for all that are supporting pastors in the regions and locations, let's pray for them. Lord, power be upon your ministers. Grace be multiplied upon them. And let us pray for the church in general, that this year, God's church will march on. This location, your location, my location, my area, your area, everywhere we are with our children, our JSS, our youth and young adults and young professionals, with all our men and women, every one of us, by the grace of God, this year, the Lord who has brought us to see this wonderful year will advance us together. Finally, pray for yourself today that the Lord will meet you at the point of need. You have come to God's presence. You won't live here as you came. He will hear your cry. He will bless your life. You, have, you are connected online. Tell the Lord something. This is the first Sunday of the year. What are you seeking before the Lord? In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Praise the Lord. We wish all of you a very happy new year. And I pray it will be newness in your life in Jesus' name. We are going to give to the Lord this new year giving. Amen. So take time, you know, deeper life when it's time for giving. Raise it up and then quickly we go. No, take time to give. For it is more blessed to give than to receive. So take time to give. Uh, in our various platforms and places, people, uh, you receive the tiki uh, to give. Or if you are physically in the church, you can raise whatever you brought before the Lord and pray for a blessing on, what, on, on the gift, or the offering, the tithe you are going to give to the Lord. Let's pray together. Father, we bless you for the opportunity to give, that we may be blessed. I pray that good measure pressed down, running over, let it be our portion in Jesus' name. May we see more of your abundance this year. And give us the heart of a giver. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. So we will take some few minutes to give. Those of us who are electronic, please you can go on the platforms to give via the Tiki. We bless the Lord for today. Do we have a special guest in our midst today? Anyone today being the first time 
you are fellowshipping with us, whether you are in Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Den Haag, or you are in this region of Eindhoven, you are a special guest. You are welcome. Can I see you? Can you indicate wherever you are that we may welcome you? At the end of the service, you have a special welcome from the local pastor. Do we have newcomers in our midst today? Any of the regions? Your pastors will welcome you specially at the end of the service. I pray that your time with us will be a blessed time in Jesus' name. Just a couple of announcements before we go on. Uh, remember, um, by the grace of God, this is a new year. And new year comes with new responsibilities. So all the meetings we have, our weekly meetings, Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday, or Thursday, depending on your region, please, let's be attentive, let's be present, and let's get the best from the Lord in Jesus' name. Uh, we are going to, before we go, we are going to show you what this, um, this year is for us. But let's go to our Bible reading first. And afterwards, we're going to show you an overview of the program we have for the year. To just give you a taste of what to expect. Our Bible reading is going to be taken from Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. Let us have a word of prayer, please. Father, we thank you the entrance of your word gives life. It gives liberty, it gives wisdom. I pray that as we read these words, help us to obey that your blessings may be ours. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Be it unto us according to the word of life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, brethren, we want to go into, uh, we're going to present something to show you how, by the grace of God, this year is going to be what God has in mind for us. Uh, greater still are going to happen, but let's get ready for it. Uh, we're going to show you overview of our national programs. There may be local, location-specific programs, but just go with me and let's see. So for 2022, what are some of the key things? What do we expect for this year? So that you can also align your expectations with us. And let's go. Um, our asp aspirations are a lot. But this, these are the core ones. We want to have a church in the whole of this Netherlands. We, are, we have to grow and we are going to grow. 275 core membership. And your regions, they will tell you the number for your region, respectively. And we want to be a people that have, as a church, a caring family. We care for one another. So we want to have that family environment. Our worship, when we come to the Lord, is Sunday worship service. Our worship will inspire one another. And we as believers will be fervent. And our uh, pastor who taught us the seminar of special study emphasized this. Fervent believers. And then we want to have skilled leaders. So leaders, members, every one of us, we have a role to play. Now, seeing this is our goal, this is what we aspire to reach in 2022. What then is the focus of our programs? Now, our programs will focus on these parts, and let me just mention some of them. We want to have a church that has a link with heaven. So, everything we want, we will do. Let us make sure we have connection with heaven. That family fellowship, we don't want to leave anyone behind. Together, we are stronger. When we come to the house of God, or even connected at home, Let's have that mind that we are in the presence of God. Amen. And please, seek God. And let the place we gather be a place people come to seek for God. When you come to church, you can be an example. When people see you seeking, they will also follow. And we pray 
our churches will be a powerhouse. Amen. A place of refuge for everyone who needs help and assistance. Now, looking at this as our focus, what are the things we're going to do? We all know, let's start with our major ones. That is the celebration services. We Normally, we have at the end of every month, we have a national celebration service. For this year, it's going to be a little different. Uh, it's not going to be every month. Today is the first of the year. That is the covenant service. The next one is going to be in March and then in June, in August, and then in November, which, is, which means five in total. Now, the other Sundays, our uh, monthly Sundays, you have special programs in the various regions. But as a nation, we come together in these particular days. They are going to be awesome. Amen. So we prepare ourselves for that. Most people ask, Oh, sorry, I don't know why my mouse go quickly. My apologies. When are we going to do the Lord's Supper? Uh, the COVID really became a hindrance. But until when are we going to make COVID a hindrance? So whether COVID or no COVID, we want to celebrate the Lord's Supper. Amen. And for this year, there are two occasions. So our next celebration service, which is in March, we will have that. And the one in August also, we're going to have that. So that we keep ourselves in this ordinance because the Lord has commanded it and we will obey. Amen. Now, remember one of the focus points. The last thing I mentioned in the focus point was that we want to be a power house. Do you remember that? There is no power without prayer. And so, as a church, we are going to devote to prayer. Now, because of the global crusade, our night vigils were often at the end of the month, but that is also the time of the global crusade. So now, our night vigils will shift to the first Friday of the month. When is the first Friday for this year? Anyone? When is the first Friday? Oh, church. This weekend. And the date is 7th. So, Friday, 7th. This Friday is our night vigil. When is our night vigil, my sister? This Friday. So, coming Friday is the night vigil. What a way to start the year. Be there to pray. Because there is no power without what? prayer and not only that we want to even go one step further this year we are going to have week of prayer with fasting oh yes for this kind goeth not except by prayer and fasting if we want to get the result we need to invest our teacher has told us so this month from 9th to 15th, we are going to have that week of prayer and fasting. The details will be communicated to us. Also, in July, we will have another week of fasting and prayer as a nation, as a church. And in your various churches or regions also, there are other programs that are going to be rolled out to you to know how together we will fast and pray. Now, we don't want everything to be of ourselves. So this year we are going to reach out. If you look at the map I've showed you, most normally we mention four regions. We mention Amsterdam, we mention which other region? Rotterdam, other region, Den Haag, and then Eindhoven. And that is four. And if you look at it in terms of the Netherlands, actually they are in three provinces, North Holland, South Holland, and then North Brabant. These are the three. How many provinces do we have in the Netherlands here? Twelve. So out of the twelve, we are actually, okay, if we add or marry, then we are, let's say, in four provinces. But there are still more provinces left. And so we don't want to keep the gospel here. So we are going to go out and we're going to spread it far and wide. And the goal is that we have the month end global crusade. We want to use that to win more souls. And we're going to do mission week. That means that a week where we will go out and the whole focus is outreach. People will not come if we don't go to them. The long-term goal is that we want to have, the next time we want to see this map, that almost every province in this country, we have a church there. Can God do it? Yes, if we work together, we can do it. So that is the goal. So let us not only f do it for ourselves, let's have in mind that we will reach out to the global, uh, to the national scale. 
and because we believe souls will come, they are going to be they are going to be baptized. In fact, this year souls will come, they will be baptized. And if you are here and you are not baptized yet, get ready because there's going to be baptism. 14th of May will be the first baptism day because this time is a bit cold, so we, we try to move a bit in the warmer period. So if you are in the church now and you desire to be baptized, please see your leader in which whichever location or region you are. 14th of May, there will be the first baptism, and God willing, 15th of October will be the second one. Are you ready? And not only we, but newcomers coming will join us in this baptism in Jesus' name. Because when they preach the gospel, the Bible says, they that believe and are baptized. So the believing and the baptism should go together. So if you have, you have believed and you are not baptized yet, please see your leader so that you can be registered for the water baptism. Just to give you, I've spoken a lot, but just to give you a recap, just to show you the next, just the next three months, what to expect. So in the month of January, the month we are in now, uh, as we mentioned, today is our National Covenant Service. Friday, the 7th, will be our week, our night vigil, sorry. And from the 9th to 15th will be the week of prayer with fasting. So that is the package for January, which will, co which will close with our global crusade. That's for January. For February, we're going to have our night vigil again every first Friday of the month. And then we'll have the global crusade. The date is not yet known, so that's why it's in red. We just assume it's going to follow the same pattern. But at least you have the night vigil and then the global crusade. When it comes to March, then our night vigil continues. Oh, what a wonderful thing to always start the month with prayer. And then we'll come again for our national celebration service, and then we'll have our holy communion. The first one will be in March. And then we'll round March up with our global crusade and a mission week. Now, all this that have been said, why are we saying this? It's just for us to know what is expected of us what we should do. You know this. You know what is coming. How do we prepare ourselves for it? So number one. What is number one, my brother there? Brother Tai, what is number one? Be available. Because it is we that make the program successful. If we have all these and we come to the church and nobody is there, we don't have a program. So be available. That is the first thing. Make sure you are there. I'll make sure I'm there and the Lord will prosper us together. Amen. Number two, be diligent. Be active. Do something. Don't be available and idle. No, be diligent. He said, this is the goal. We want souls. Get people. Invite others to church. Be diligent. Number three, be faithful in giving. Be faithful in prayer. Live a faithful life. And the last one I want us to do is to be what? Be courageous. The Lord told Joshua, said, be strong and of what? A good courage. This year, be strong and of a good courage. And our Lord will give us an answer of peace in Jesus' name. I believe this is going to be my year, and it's going to be your year. And as we work together, month after month, by and by, the Lord will take us to our destination in Jesus' name. Let's go before God in prayer and tell the Lord, Lord, we don't we we, we are so grateful unto you for what the plans you have for us. But we pray that beyond the plans, let them be active to actual, uh, actualize in us. May it be performed in us. We want to see it happening in our life. We want to see it coming real. That at the end of this year, this program, these expectations will be met. The Lord will prosper us together. Amen. 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 We are going to rise up as we take our congregational song.
I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I onward bound, Lord plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up. 
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are grateful to God for bringing us into a new year. We pray that as we offer our sacrifice of worship, it will be acceptable in His sight in Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are going to pray together. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of another year with you. We give you all the glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we ask that you will feed us this year also. Amen. Lord, we pray. Our souls shall not famish this year. Amen. You will build us up for yourself, for your glory, Amen. and make us that church that you have designed us to be in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for strength from above Amen. that we will be able to run on the oil of grace. Amen. As we listen to your word now, we pray the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts. Amen and let it profit our lives. Amen. We thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is gracious unto his people. And I want to assure you that as God was with us last year, he's still the same God. From time to time, from ages to ages, God remains the same, and he will carry us, all of us, until the end of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. None of us is going to shipwreck. You will make it to the end in Jesus' name. Amen. This year, our theme is upward, forward, onward. Amen. Amen. You go up. You move forward, and you continue. And that is going to be our theme for the year. As we have read, the Lord is going to be our shepherd. And because of that, we will not lack anything. Praise the Lord. As long as the Lord remains our shepherd, we trust him that we may not know what is going to be. You don't see the future. Sometimes there are uncertainties. But God says, he will carry us. He will carry you. Amen. Till your old age, he says, he will carry you. Amen. And that's the God we are serving. I pray that our confidence, our assurance in that God will remain firm in Jesus' name. Amen. Upward, forward, onward. Number one, upward. That is an indication of progress. Which kind of progress? Unlimited progress. Unique progress. Last year, year of elevation and establishment. We are not starting from the ground level. Amen. Amen. We are elevated already. And we established in that elevation already. What God is telling you today is you should gain altitude. Amen. Amen. You know when the plane has taken off, it's cruising, and then maybe you're on the Rocky Mountains, and the pilot says there are high clouds, so you feel some turbulence. What do they sometimes do? They increase in their altitude so that we can leave the, 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 the turbulent clouds below. Amen. Amen. You will go upward. Amen. Where we reached last year, that is not going to be our altitude this year. Amen. Because God is taking us higher. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Every day. That will be your own in Jesus' name. Amen. 
We want to make a difference in our lives. In Numbers chapter 26, Numbers chapter 26, when we talk about upward, I just want to trace that word for you. Numbers chapter 26 and verse 2. The Bible says, Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel. And, and, and when we are reading, when we get to the word upward, all of us are going to shout it together. Amen. Amen. Take the sum of all the congregation of the children of Israel from 20 years old and oh. upward. Amen. Amen. Throughout their father's house, all that are able to go to war in Israel. Now, this is the separation of soldiers. When we're talking about upward, it's saying it's not for babies, spiritual babies. All of us, we are going to grow up. Because it says from 20 years old and upward. This is the separation of the soldiers. And that means this year, you will be a soldier for the Lord in Jesus' name. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, 1 Samuel chapter 9, Reading from verse 1. You remember that word? Anytime we come across it. Now there was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kesh, the son of Abiel, the son of Zero, the son of Bekorat, the son of Aphia, a Benjamite, a man of a mighty man of power. Now, think about the description of this man. The Bible talks about this man, a mighty man of what? Of power. And you are thinking about, oh, this man will be doing a lot. Could there be anybody mightier than this man? Look at verse 2. And he had a son. Amen. Amen. Whose name was Saul, a choice young man and a goodly. And there was not among the children of Israel a goodlier person than he. From his shoulders and upward. upward. Amen. Amen. He was higher than any of the people. Think about it. If all of them, when all of them stood up, and when you look at his shoulder, everybody else, their head was up to his shoulder. Every other person. He was higher than every other person. This is what is going to happen to you this year. You will be higher than the rest. Amen. When they bring the best out and they line them up, what is going to happen? You will excel above them. That's what upward actually means for us. It is the distinction of dignity for us. That anywhere you are, your children at school, when they rank all the other children, you say, where are these children from? Do you remember? Some people don't think uh, that uh, God can do that. They say, well, there can be only one child that is best. Well, all our own children will be best. Because in the book of Daniel, the Bible says, among all these children, there was none like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. There is room for more than one. From their shoulder upward, academically, they will be higher than any other person. Amen. In your office, when they are talking about the great people, the people making impact, for you, from your shoulder upward, you are in another class. Amen. In your university, in your polytechnic, from your shoulder upwards, you are above the rest. Amen. In your business, even among the best of business people, from your own shoulder upward, you are higher than the rest. Amen. And that's upward. is the distinction of dignity. God will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. In 2 Kings chapter 19. 2 Kings chapter 19. Reading from verse 30. Amen. Amen. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah. Wait a minute. These people already escaped. When I say somebody has escaped, you will say, praise God. War, tribulation, difficulty, they escaped. They will not perish. You will not perish in Jesus' name. You know, you will be thinking, praise God. 
They are escaped already. I'm saved already. I'm not going to hell. And some people, they won't go to hell, but they will see hell on earth. That's not for you. Because they say, well, thank God for even God, you have saved me. If you can just put me uh, in a box somewhere and put me in a corner, the devil will knock me, knock, knock, knock my head, knock everywhere. I, I don't, once I get to heaven, that's okay. And when they are suffering, they say, well, God, just let me make heaven. It's like these people that escaped. But that's not God's picture for you. Yes, there is tribulation on earth. You will overcome. Amen. Tribulation is not the end of the story. Look at it. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again do what? Take root downward and bear fruit upward. upward. Amen. Amen. This year you will take root down, down, downward. That's why we have been told how to walk with God acceptably. The things you need to do and how we should be available for the ministry of the church so that doing this, we will be able to take root downward. And when you begin to bring forth fruit upward, nothing is going to make you to fall in Jesus' name. You will bring it, you will bring it, you bring it upward in Jesus' name. That is the fruitfulness of the faithful. Because you have escaped, and now you are faithful to God, you are going to be fruitful in Jesus' name. In Job chapter 5, Job chapter 5, reading from verse 7. Job chapter 5, verse 7. Yet man is born unto trouble. Hmm. Man is born unto trouble. You, you hear that? But that's not where I'm going, because you will overcome the trouble. The troubles will come, you'll crush them. But I'm looking at the illustration the Bible makes here. Yet a man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly. You remember? As the sparks fly. Amen. This is the, 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 the flame of the firebrand. That's what you are going to be. When there is a spark of fire, it doesn't go into the ground. It always fly upward. Do you remember, you know, when there is explosion, even uh, in the, all this uh, New Year celebration, uh, and there is all these uh, fireworks, what happens? Where do the, do the sparks go? They go upward. That's how you are going to be. You will be a firebrand in the hand of the Almighty God. You will fly upward this year because God's fire will be in your life. So, that is the flame of the firebrand, and uh, it will be the beginning of greater blessings in your life. In Haggai chapter 2, Haggai chapter 2, if you are there, say amen. amen. Ah, not everybody, not everybody. My brethren from Den Haag, if you are there, say Amen. No, I mean Den Haag. This, this is Amsterdam. I, I mean, I want to hear Den Haag. Ah, I don't only wave. I want to hear your voice. If you are there, say amen. amen. Ah, IT has muted them. Don't worry. We can see you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Haggai chapter 2 from verse 18. Consider now from this day and from this day and Upward. What does God say? From the four and twentieth day of the ninth month. Uh, from which day? 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 The 2nd of January, 2022. Some people read it and you, know, you read something there. They say you make it yourself. And I say 24. This thing is written. Whatever is written is written for us. Amen. Amen. From today. Amen. Amen. What is going to happen to you? Is the seed yet in the barn? Verse 19. Yea, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate. And the olive tree hath not brought forth from this day, I will bless you. 
It is the beginning of greater blessings in your life. And the Lord is going to confirm this upon your life in Jesus' name. That's the God we are serving. Upward. What's the next word? It, 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 you know, it, it, let me, it, there is an easy way to remember the theme for this year. Do you know there are some things flying in the sky and people cannot identify them? What do they call them? Unidentified flying objects. What's the short word for that? UFO. UFO. Huh? Upward, forward, onward. Satan will not be able to identify you this year. You will be flying and they will be saying, what's, what's, what's happening? What's going on? Satan will be confused. Evil spirits will be confused because you will become Jesus' own UFO in Jesus' name. So, upward, what's the next one then? It's easy to remember. Amen. Forward implies progress. It indicates fruitfulness in a remarkable, noticeable, and enviable way. It is the greatness of growth. Let's look at Genesis chapter 26. Are, are you following me? Yeah. My brethren in ninth heaven, are, are you following me? Hmm. Where are they? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 We want ninth heaven to fly this year. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are going to read from which book did I say? Yes. Chapter 26. And we are going to read from verse 13. Genesis chapter 26 and verse 13. The Bible says, uh, 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 you know, which word are we going to be echoing now? Forward. Forward. Hallelujah. And the man worked great and went forward and grew until he became very great. Amen. The Bible says this man, he, he, he was going up, 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 and then forward. He became great. He went upward and now forward until everybody started to say, hey, what is going on? And the man was a foreigner. Can you imagine that? You know, some people have the mentality, ah, if you are a foreigner, there is no future. Not, not Isaac, not you. You will make it. Other people will begin to look at, how did he make it? You will make it. Amen. Amen. God has elevated you. He has established you. You are moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is the greatness of growth. How did it happen? Look at verse 12. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him. That's what will happen to you. You will sow this year. Our pastors will sow this year. And the Lord will bless them. Amen. You will see their congregation multiplying. Amen. You will see the children church multiplying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The youth ministry, you will see them multiplying. Amen. Our tree church, you will see that church multiplying. Amen. Everywhere there will be multiplication. Amen. Because we will sow in the land of our appointment. And God is going to bless us. Not only that, even you, yourself, in your family. Amen. Amen. If you are married, you and your wife, and you are looking each other in the face, and you are asking, when are we going to organize because our money has not, we, have not, we are not settled. God will settle you this year. Amen. Because God will multiply you. Amen. Get ready for twins. Amen. 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 Huh, some people say, Pastor, how are we going to feed them? God, who made you to get married? Even if you have ten children, they will be fed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In any way, it is a blessing for the children's church. If we are praying for enlargement in the children's church, and everybody says, well, Pastor, we have to be meticulous about this. Let's delay our children, our childbirth. Uh, you are working contrary to the prayer. You understand? Uh, I lost my audience altogether. Amen. Amen. Because many of our pastors, they have finished the business. We are waiting for the rest of the other people to pick up. Amen. Amen. And follow the example. That means if you are not married, huh, 
If you are still in the single corner and I see them, I don't want to look at them now. Amen. Amen. But this year, double-double. Everybody say double-double. Double-double, sharp-sharp. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And the wife is coming. Amen. And the husband is coming. Amen. Amen. Sent from heaven. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. Imported or homemade, you will get married. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord will lead you in Jesus' name. Amen. You will sow. You will, bless, you will be blessed. In Exodus chapter 14, Exodus chapter 14, this year, upward, forward, onward. Exodus chapter 14, I read from verse 15. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. forward. Amen. Hallelujah. That they go forward is the advancement of action. People who act and act at God's commandment, they will always advance. This year we are advancing. I am advancing. I am advancing. I am pressing on. I am going upward. I am going forward. I am going onward. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hey, you know, sometimes, listen to me, uh, when we look at our children, say, ah, this boy. He was so young, we were carrying him. And now he has grown. We easily associate growth to children. But if you are 70 this year, how, how old will you be next year? What is that? Growth. Amen. Yeah. All of us should grow. I don't just want to watch children grow. I also want to grow. And then you look at the child and say, Hi. This child is already, he's already, he's already 10. And then, but the time that he was begotten, you were also 10 years younger. But we don't see that. You are going nearer and nearer to the grave and you say, This boy is growing up. What about you? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With long life will he satisfy me. Yeah. Hallelujah. What about you then? Long. Until your voice cannot catch anymore. You see, the point is this. Advance. And if you want to advance, you have to act. It's not going to happen automatically. But as you are acting in faith, the advancement will be coming. There may be some things that you are not sure how they are going to, figure, to, 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 to work out. I do, you don't know how to figure them out. Advance. Act. When you act, God be with you, you are going to make progress. There are people who don't want to, they say they don't want to take any risk. They don't know that without a risk, there is no reward. There is, in fact, it is not even a risk. When you are acting in faith, there is assurance because God says, go, and you go. And there are people say they, they, were, they were crying. God told Moses, why are you crying? It's not time for prayer now. Ask the children of Israel, move forward. Amen. Amen. In evangelism, we will act. And there will be advancement in Jesus' name. In church planting, we will act. There will be advancement in Jesus' name. So shall the Lord increase us mightily in Jesus' name. It is the togetherness of our, of our tribes. Our tribes will go forward together. There will be no division among us. Look at Numbers chapter 2. Numbers chapter 2. Everyone, everyone. Remember what uh, uh, the pastor told us about the, the, the view of the church? We want to be a family. Nobody should be left behind. Amen. Amen. Even if you feel that you are left behind, what do you do? You go somewhere and you're saying, I don't want to be part of them anymore. They have left me behind. Is that what, is that what you should do? No. no. Hey, you call your pastor, pastor, I'm being left behind. I don't want to be left behind. I will not be left behind. Every member of the church counts. All of us together, we count. We are not running anywhere. By God's grace, we will evangelize. But our evangelism does not mean that we that are members of the church, we are going to be neglected. In fact, all of us together, we want to work together to evangelize. 
We don't want to evangelize without you. We don't want to grow without you. We don't want any of us to just feel, hey, what is the purpose of having a large church where there is no family? Sometimes you hear this, and if you're in that category, please pardon me. A woman may appro you know, approach me and say, Pastor, I have children, but I have no marriage. Isn't that painful? God is going to change your situation. Because everybody, you don't want to be in a family. Amen. During the watch night service, a sister made something, it mentioned something for me that was so beautiful. And then I was talking about, you know, uh, 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 is it Happy New Year to my family? I said, the church is my family. Oh, that's beautiful, brethren. That's beautiful, brethren. Everybody that comes into the church in any location, eh, let's say somebody travels from The Hague and goes to uh, Eindhoven, when she, he gets there, he just finds family. Say, hey, sister, thank God you are here. Thank God, brother, you are here. That's the way we want our members to be known. Anywhere, everywhere, that this is a family church. And that's why we want to be together with our tribes. Whether in that location or that location, that's for organization purposes. We know, okay, there is that region, there is that region, there is that place. All of us together in unity. And we are interested in what is happening in your family. I don't mean we are going to be focusing. What we mean is this. We want every member of your own nuclear family to prosper. Amen. 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 We want your children to prosper. Amen. There are programs to help the adult, to help the young, to help the old. So that the church, the prayer, the goal is that this church will be a church in harmony. A church of families. That you come to church and you know, yes, my people are there for me. A sister gave a testimony during the watch night service. She said, I thank God when I was in the church, my brethren were there for me. Think about that. That's a church. That's a family. Does it mean that everything the church is going to do is... The church, there are human beings there. You also know in your own nuclear family. You, between you and your husband, and, I mean, as husband and wife. You know what, before you got married, I found the love of my life. And then sometimes uh, Papa will say, are you going to marry this? Nobody should suppress her. Nobody should suppress her. And I can't sleep because of the, you know, the, the courtship. Uh, after, you, after you got married, sometimes, ah. Sister, why are you doing like this? I don't like this one now. But you still love the person. The same thing in the church. Sometimes people do things in the church that we don't like because we have different backgrounds. But are we going to say we are not part of the body anymore? Uh, that's taking things too far. We are all together. The only thing is that if somebody does something you don't like, tell them. No, pastor, this thing I don't like it. Because we are family. Don't you tell daddy at home. Daddy, hey, the thing that I have some little children, sometimes they will say, I will beat daddy. Have you never heard that in your own house? Be, be, because daddy does something they don't like. Same thing. Don't be pastor, but <laughs> tell pastor. Pastor, I, I this thing I don't like. But that's what makes the family a family. That's where you can be free. I, I can't go to somebody else's family and throw my shoes. If I go and visit people, I, don't, I, don't, I can't throw my shoes anywhere. They will say, where, which, where is this man coming from? But when you are home, you are a little bit freer because this is your home. Let everybody be free in the church. We don't criticize one another. We don't cut one another. We don't uh, gossip against one another. No, we don't do that because we are a family. And God will, may, may, will keep us together in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to read that from, uh, from where now? Numbers. Which chapter? Two. Chapter 2. Numbers chapter 2 from verse 34. The Bible says, and the children of Israel did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So they pitched by their standards, and so they set forward everyone after their families according to the house of their fathers. Amen. Amen. According to their house fellowships, according to their regions, according to their locations, but all of us going forward. No location is going to be left behind in Jesus' name. And, you know, when you read uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 24, I'm not going to read it. Uh, some people said, they are not going forward, they are going backward. That is rebellion. 
We will reject that. It is the rejection of rebellion. And it is the drive of duty. In 2 uh, Kings chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 24, I, I will just paraphrase it for you. The woman had something urgent to do. Her son had just died. And then told the servant, saddle the, uh, the ass, slack not your hand, go forward until I tell you. When there is duty, when there's something for us to do, eh, is it the weekend of, uh, of, of, of uh, mission weekend or the week of prayer and fasting or we want to do global crusade? All of us, there is that kind of passion for duty. Eh? That, that there is a drive for our duty, and we will do it all together in Jesus' name. Nobody will be left behind. We are not going to be slacking our hands. We are not going to be slowing down the progress of the brethren. We will all move together in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And uh, it is passion to participate. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, when we do things, we do with all our heart, with everything within us, with passion within us. You know, there are some things that people do, and they will say, must we do this one again? Especially, you, you, do you remember children, when you want them to take vegetable, and then you put uh, sprouts there, and they will say, ah, hmm, must we eat this one again? You have seen that feeling? When it's time to eat jam, yay! McDonald's, yay! And all now, whatever we are going to eat this year, we will eat passionately. We are not babies anymore. We want to make progress together in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians, which chapter, my brethren? Chapter 8. Second Corinthians, chapter 8, verse 10. And herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now, therefore, perform it. Do you see that word forward again? In this case, it means to be, you know, passionate. Yeah? You, you, you hear something, and then you just go ahead and do it. Yeah? To, be, to, 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 to be passionate, to be forward a year ago. Verse 11, now, therefore, perform the doing of it. That as there was readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. For if there be first a willing mind, it is accepted according to that a man hath, and not according to that which he has not. You see, it's, it's, it's this kind of the passion to participate. I want to be part of it. Financially, I want to be part of it. In contributing my, my, my gifts, my talents, I want to be a part of it. Not everybody is just, you are just enthusiastic. God is going to make it like that for us in Jesus' name. We are not going to stay in one position. We will move forward. We will make progress in Jesus' name. We are not going to stop in our development. We are moving forward in Jesus' name. We are not spending all the time in planning. There must be execution. No, there are some people, bro, what are you, uh, how far have you gone? I have been really, really planning. What about that business you wanted to do? Yes, I've been planning. For, for three years, you're still planning. For four years. Marriage, what about the marriage? Yes, I'm really, really seriously considering it. I asked her four years ago, I said, Pastor, it's getting to time. And this is a sister at the age of 27. So we are still considering it. Yes, I'm thinking about it because I want to, I'm waiting until, I'm planning, planning seriously until I get Mr. Right. Hmm. If you're not careful, you always become an Omar without any, any partner. It will not happen to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you a woman? <laughs> Praise the Lord. We don't spend all the time in planning. You, you go, there are some people, they, are, they want to find out the person. I said, number one, uh, I don't want the man to, to a man, he will not give me trouble. He must be rich. He must be educated. He must come from my tribe. The height must be, I don't want a short man. And I don't want to be like this. The, the, the conditions are so many that if you ask Angel Gabriel to say, can you find, pick a, 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 a husband for my sister? The Angel Gabriel said, I've looked around all the earth. I couldn't find anybody. 
Amen. So you better make up your mind that you want. And the same thing with brothers. Ah! I know, I know, I know, I know. If I look at my mother, my mother beautiful, beautiful cooking. And they can, this person must be able to cook. When I want king, king must be able to cook. It. When I want to bottle, must be able to cook. It. When I want to, I say, must be educated, educated, must study law, I must be able to cook a bottle. Can you, you see that the combination is becoming very, very difficult? Must be a career woman. Anywhere I go, I will stand like this when I'm talking, and everybody will be able to understand. And then I say, the person standing beside me, and five of them, I say, ah, wait, cool down a little bit. Otherwise, you are going to spend all your time planning. It is time to go what? Forward. You will go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Upward. Forward. Onward. Onward shows focus. You know, as we ascend upward and move forward, our vision remains heavenly. Amen. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. We have a destination. We are pilgrims. We aim for a city whose maker and builder is God. It is the guidance of our almighty God. You know, this is a church. We are pilgrims. We are heavenly people. Our vision is not downward. As we are making progress, we are linked with heaven. Amen. Because we are waiting. There is a time when Jesus will come. We are preparing. Because this is our goal. And... Exodus chapter 40, Exodus chapter 40, reading from verse 36, Exodus chapter 40, verse 36. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went, how? Onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud were not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was upon the tabernacle by day, and fire was on it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journey. Praise the Lord. The Lord is leading us to the land of promise. And that's what makes the church unique. You know, people, practically anybody can just wake up and say, I'm making money, I'm making this. But when it comes to believers, Members of the household of faith, you will know that their ambition, their life is just different. They have a destination they are going. My brother, that's where we are going. Why are we a family together? So that we can encourage one another as you see the day of the Lord approaching. My brethren, we are not preparing to stay in this world forever. Our destination, our citizenship, our conversation is in heaven. And it is from there we are expecting, waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. In the world, there may be challenges. There may be one or two things that you don't like. But Jesus Christ says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. God wants us to do it. We'll go onward. Onward, Christian soldiers. Marching up the world. With the cross of Jesus going on before Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward, Christian soldier. That, that's the way God wants us to move. And we are making progress day by day, day by day. God is purifying us as we come to the church. And when somebody gets converted, he goes to the convert class. How are we doing that? We are preparing for heaven. You go to, you know, the Believer's Development Program. You want to know more and more so that you can become more like Jesus Christ. Why? Because you are preparing for heaven. You are preparing yourself. You know, I want to study. I want to pray so that I will be able to work in the house of God. I want to be a laborer, a minister in the house of God. For what reason? Heavenly. Heavenly. That's what God wants to do with us in the name of Jesus. As we are doing that, don't let anybody go back. Amen. Look at Numbers chapter 14. My brethren, there will, be, there will be temptations to go back. Temptation. And sometimes it, it could even be, you know, in the 
in the house of God. Uh, maybe there are offenses, maybe there are some challenges, and then you are getting discouraged. Maybe because if, if it is like that, uh, even when I was in the world, I didn't experience some of those things. Why is it now in the church? Don't worry. It's just a matter of time, a matter of patience. We want to get to heaven together. Amen. Amen. Don't leave us. We like the way you are singing. We like the way you are playing the trumpet. We like the way, you know, the keyboard, the way you, you play it, we like it. We like the way you are evangelizing. We like the way that you lead prayers. We like the way that you, you know, you lead house fellowship. We like the way you preach. We want you to be part of us. We want to be together. We don't want anybody to leave. We will be sad if you left us. We will be, we will be completely unhappy. And we would grieve if you left us. Come with us. The Lord will do good. You good. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, don't go. Don't go. If there is anything, come, come and say, oh, I don't like this one. I don't like this one. Amen. Amen. If we have offended you, we will apologize. But we don't want you to go away. Even when we talk strongly and we say, sister, brother, this one is not good. We don't want you to do this. And we correct you and we rebuke you. It's not because of anger or because of anything. It's because we want you to make heaven. But we don't want you to leave. Amen. You will not leave me. You will not leave us. I don't want you to leave. Do you want me to leave? No, I, don't, I know you don't want me to leave. You will help me to make heaven. I will help you to make heaven in Jesus' name. Which book? Numbers chapter 14, verse 4. And he said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt. Is this what we want to do? No. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that served the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, and the Lord will delight in us, then he will bring us into this land. And give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them. And the Lord is with us. Fear them not. My brethren, we will get there together in Jesus' name. Finally, let's read from Hebrews chapter 14. Chapter 12, rather. Hebrews chapter 12. The Lord will lead us to the promised land. In the name of Jesus. We will not return to Egypt. Yeah? We will not return to Egypt. Amen. We will not pick up the things that we left behind. We will focus on heaven. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. We have foreseen we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience. The race that is set before us. Are we going to do that? Yes. How are we going to do that? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. He hath not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. My brethren, we will do it together. We will make it together. You know, as I mentioned, I don't want to say it too much. We want this church to be a family, a family of pilgrims. Help us to help one another in maintaining holiness in the house of God, in binding us together in unity, in our passion to serve the Lord together, in cooperating with the leaders in the church to say, okay, this is what our leaders want us to do. This is what God is leading us to do. We're going to do it together. In keeping the house of God in peace. All of us together. Not striving, not agitating, and not racing ourselves in all humility. All of us together. Amen. You know, the pastor is not the Lord. Jesus is the Lord. The pastor is your servant. It's your leader. We honor our pastors. 
We want to encourage them so that their work will be easier to manage for all of us together. At whatever level you may be operating, in whatever section of the church, in whatever location, in your family, as an individual, I trust the Lord this year, we will gain altitude. Amen. We will move upward. Amen. And we will make progress. We will go forward. Amen. And that heavenly goal, we are not going to lose it in Jesus' name. Amen. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. Let's rise up to pray together. We'll spend some time to pray as our pastor from Eindhoven Church uh, will lead us in prayer. We want to thank God for what we have just heard, making it upward, forward, and onward. Let's thank the Lord that he has brought us this far. We have heard it all. God is before us, a mighty man of battle. And God has assured us this year, it's my year, your year, to move forward, your year to move to the next level, you're here to make progress upward, forward, onward. What have you heard? Bring that before the Lord. What did you hear with the first word, upward? Upward. Remember Saul from his shoulders, from his shoulders, and upward he was higher than everyone. Let us pray that this year the Lord will take us higher, higher. No matter how we, no matter how much we accomplished last year, we will move on. Upward. 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 This is your time. Get up, sister. Get up, brother. Pray. You will go upward. Lord, plant my feet on higher grounds. I want to scale the utmost height. I want to move higher. I want to go above the world. The Lord is able. Jesus Christ, as we thank you for your word, Jesus, the word of God is to go. Jehovah Father, let your word in the name of Jesus. Lord, in Jesus. Upward is a destination of distinction. Upward is a distinction of dignity. That's where we want to get to. Upward. We, want, we don't want to remain at the bottom. We want to go higher. Lord, plant my feet higher. In my faith, I want to go up. Lord, increase my faith in my devotion. I want to move up. Upward. Upward. You will not just go down. Upward in fruitfulness. Oh, remember the people that escaped? They took root downwards and they bore fruit upwards. This year, you are going to bear fruits, upward fruits. You will fly upward. Just like the airplane. No matter the turbulence, the pilots don't come down. They always move upward. They just leave the turbulence behind and they move upward. Don't let turbulence sink you. Don't let the turbulence bring you down. By the grace of God this year, Lord, grant me grace to move upward. Remember, church, the wind that seemed to keep the airplane down is the same wind that lifts that airplane up. No matter the struggles or turbulence today, tell the Lord, they will carry you higher. In your school, no matter the challenges you are facing, your academics, tell the Lord, I am moving upward in your home. In any situation you find yourself today, we are moving upward. 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 In the name of Jesus, upward for your church. Up upward means you are moving to the next level. Upward. There's always room at the top. Have you realized that? You can always move higher. Higher. Come up higher. Upward. You can get there. 
Don't settle and say it's enough. No, you can go. You can move. You can move higher. This is the beginning of greater blessings. Remember that in Haggai, we were told that from this day, it was a particular date, but yours is from today, 2nd of January, 2022. This is the beginning of great things for you. Tell the Lord, Lord, from this very Sunday, I want to, I want to see my life transformed. I will go upward. Higher, greater, stronger, wiser, we will be upward. Upward, we will go. And now we said, remember the one, that one was so wonderful, forward. It was said about this man, Isaac. The Bible said, and the man went forward. And until he was very great, forward, forward. Tell the Lord, Lord, give me grace to move forward. Forward implies progress. Forward implies greatness of growth. That is it, forward. Moving on, progress, forward. You will make it. The Lord will help you to make the progress. You have to pray, Lord. Your ch the church of God will march forward. Your church, your family, your life will move forward. You will make progress. You will sow the labor you need to, 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 ha to make. The diligence you require. Tell the Lord, I will do my part. I will do my part and the Lord will make you move forward. Remember where we said every family, they, were, they all went forward. Every tribe went forward. And let us pray that this year every church will make progress, will move forward. Right in The Hague, over there in Amsterdam, in Rotterdam, in Almere, and beyond. Right here in Eindhoven. Every location, every region, every church, every family, every household, we will move forward. Lord, stagnation will not be our fault in Jesus. From stagnation to significance, you will move forward. At your workplace, you will move forward. Students, the story must change. You will move forward. Pastors, parents, we will move forward. This is what the Lord has assured us this year. And let us pray, Lord, grant us the grace. Whatever it takes us to move forward, the Lord will give to us. The diligence, the discipline to move forward, we shall receive. We'll move forward. We'll move forward. Wherever the numbers, you see our numbers might have been moving around the same 20, 30, 40, 50. And has always stayed like that for many, many years. But this year, the, by the grace of God, the church of God will advance. We will move forward. Forward. Oh, I love that song. So forward, forward. This is the Lord's command. Forward, forward. That's what the master has said. We are sure to win with Christ our king. Let's pray the Lord will go before with us. Forward. We are sure to win. I am sure to win with Christ on our side. With Jesus on your side. Forward. With Christ the king. We are sure to win. Forward is about the passion to participate. Oh, the passion to participate. You will not be a bench warmer or a seat warmer. You have the passion to participate, the passion to pray, the passion to lead, the passion to join hands together. As a wife, as a husband, passion to participate. As a member, as a minister, passion to participate. All of us, oneness of heart, that family unity, passion to participate. You will bring your own. I'll bring my own. And we will move forward. We'll advance together. And finally, brethren, onward. Onward means there is no stopping. Onward. There's no stopping. There's no stopping. There's no stopping. The Lord will keep you running. The Lord will keep you running. There's no stopping. Oh, the, the songwriter said, when you are tempted, my brother, God give you the grace to say no. Onward means there is no stopping. When you are tired, may the Lord strengthen you. Ask for strength because heaven is our home. I will never end my journey halfway. You will never end your journey halfway. The Lord will assist you. Onward. 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 Looking unto Jesus. He is there. He is there. Onward. Onward.
looking unto him. Our destination is heaven. Our city is the heavenly city. We are earthly pilgrims. Heaven is our home. We will not go back to Egypt. Looking unto Jesus. Tell the Lord, grant me the grace to move onward. Onwards. Onwards. You are going. Onwards. Onward, Christian soldiers. Marching on. Onwards. Looking unto Jesus. Who is gone before. Looking unto the Lord. Onwards. Wives, look unto Jesus. Onwards. Wives, husbands, singles, children, students, men and women, ministers, workers, all of us. Onward. One day we shall see Jesus. One day our tears will be wiped away. That is the ultimate. Onward. Pray, Lord, hold my hand. Dear Lord, hold my hand. Make me strong. I've, I've been from a long way. We have traveled very far, even in this pandemic, pandemic period. But we still have a long way to go. The Lord will keep you strong. Strong in prayer. Strong in, in, in obedience to the word of God. Strong, strong, and stronger until we see him. Onward. Onward, it shall be so. Finally, what do you want to tell the Lord this year? Let your request be made known unto the Lord. The request be made known unto the Lord. Tell the Lord something. Tell the Lord something. Tell the Lord something. Tell the Lord something. This is the first Sunday of the year. Tell the Lord something. Tell the Lord something. This is the moment. This is the moment. Tell the Lord something. This is your moment. Tell the Lord something. This is the very first Sunday of the year. Tell the Lord something. The Lord hear thee. The Lord hear thee. The Lord hear thee. The Lord hear thee. The Lord grant you help from his throne. The Lord grant you help from his sanctuary. The Lord help the Lord, the God of Jacob, shine his face upon you. Tell the Lord. What is your request? Make it known unto the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This year, how are you moving? How are you moving this year? Upward, upward, forward, onward. Raise up those hands. The Lord confirm it in your life. Father, we thank you that you have elevated us and established us. Yet you have told us this place is not our final destination. The land is in front of us. We should get up, upward, forward, onwards. Lord, as your word has come forth, our prayer is be it unto us according to your word in Jesus' name. That every single one of us, from our little children in the children class, to our kids in the JSS, to all our youth and young adults, young professionals, to all our brothers and sisters, men and women, married and singles are around here, to our workers and our ministers. Lord, I pray that this year, we all as one family will move upward, forward, and onward in Jesus' name. Lord, all the obstacles of yesterday, let them be crushed in the name of Jesus. Doubts, worries, anxieties, every form of hindrance, we pray, Lord, they will be taken away in Jesus' name. Lord, hold our hands. Strengthen us in the inner man. Grant us the grace that today, in our workplaces, in our schools, in our homes, anywhere we find ourselves, will be people with distinguishable marks in Jesus' name will be men and women of distinction in the name of Jesus. And this your church, oh Lord, this year, every location, tribe, family, gender, age, whatever it is, all of us will advance in the name of Jesus. Father, this is your word. We pray that at the end of this year, when you have taken us through by your mercy, your people will be full of testimonies when we can confirm that indeed the Lord has taken us upward, forward, onward. 
Glory be to your name for this day, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you and make you greater than you have ever imagined for yourself in Jesus' name. You will go upward, forward, and onward. At this time, we would like to break into our various regions. So, all uh, IT will help us so that we can welcome each other specially and wish ourselves a better Happy New Year. It's wonderful to see our faces in this new year. So, we will give our IT time uh, to divide the various to put us in our various regions. Uh, if somebody is there whose name is not, we can brought to our various regions. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.